Hey everybody, it is March 16th, 2008. I'm Sonic Sons, and I've been away for a while because my camera was on the fritz. Um, you can see my early videos about uh, webcam troubles, etc., etc. Basically, this thing will sometimes randomly like spend a couple of days or a couple of weeks where the sound is all crazy, and then I just mess around with it and or just wait for it to fix itself, which it will. And uh, eventually comes back. So hopefully it's working right now. I'll have to watch my own video after I after I finish it and see. But I'm gonna move on to some other topic because it's been too long since I talked to anybody on YouTube, and the internet, and the fiddler, and that TV. So as you can see from the title of this video, I've been thinking about education. In fact, I've been thinking about it for a while. But the video that anyway. <laughs> um, I live in America. So that's my experience of the educational system is. I don't know exactly how things are different elsewise. Uh, and I think I've been on the, the upper levels of the education market, as it were. Uh, every school I've been to has had plenty of funding and good facilities and stuff. If I don't have, like, you know, gang violence or any huge factors uh, like that. So in many ways, I've been very fortunate. And I'm attending college now, attending good college. But nevertheless, in both uh, primary and secondary school and in college, does anyone use the term secondary school? I don't know. Uh, but in all of these schools, I am dissatisfied. I have complaints. I've had complaints for the longest time. I think since about first grade uh, that I've had a problem with school. <laughs> all right, all right. So what is this whole, this whole school thing? Um, in fact, maybe I should talk, term it that way. School? Or is it school or is it education? School versus education. They fight each other, not necessarily. But, um, I don't know. Wasn't it Einstein who said that imagination is more important than knowledge? Something else he said about uh, curiosity is a little plant, which is mainly in need of freedom, something like that. I don't think the school system gets that, <laughs> really. I've done a lot of memorization <laughs> of 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 some random fact or another, um, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, what was this cool thing? Well, all right, we have uh, first off people, particularly children, people in general, really, and uh, they need to know stuff. And so we figure, why don't we have a centralized system and you can go to this place and learn things? I'm like, right, like a library, except. That school, while it may have a library, has this other thing where are the, the, these classes. And you go to a class, and you're supposed to be taught things. And the really tricky part comes in when it starts to become compulsory. I can understand the idea of compulsory education. I mean, want everyone to be educated. Particularly if, like, say, you're poor or whatever, and you wouldn't be able to afford education if, say, people had to pay for it. And, uh, well, now we, we provide that for you. And in fact, we force you to go get yourself educated um, at our public school system. Though actually, you know, you can't go to a private school if you have the money for it, which you probably don't. <laughs> um, things like that. All right. So, 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 so we go to we go to kids, uh, and they go to and, and, and every day you're supposed to get up and you get on this school bus generally, and you go to this building which is called a school, and immediately. We segregate the kids. Most of this can be about kids, because that's where most of the school system takes place in. We segregate the kids based on age. Now, why do we do that? I can understand that, like, you know, the five year olds are probably going to be at a different level of education than the ten year olds, and that naturally, you know, they're kind of separate that way, but why, why do we have this forced idea of, of you know, you're, you're in your grade? You're in first grade or second grade or third grade, um, and you're with that group of people, and you will stay with that group. And in very rare cases, you might jump a grade ahead, or you might fall one grade behind. But generally, you walk into a classroom, and you've got, say, 20 of your peers that are all within about a year or so of your age. So everyone has to be the same age in a classroom. Except for there's one other person who's not the same age who's much older, in fact, that's the teacher. And there's a teacher in front of the class telling all the kids what to do. Now, why is it that we can have this, say, 40-year-old teacher 
in the classroom with, with the kids when they were segregated by age. Well, because the teacher will teach the kids, obviously. All right, right. But 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 why, why can't, you know, there be something in the middle of that interaction? Why can't a 10-year-old help out with the education of the 5-year-olds once in a while? Couldn't that work? Couldn't that, you know, you put them together? I mean, certainly kids can interact well enough together when you put them out to recess, if, for instance, you happen to have all the grades go to recess at the same time. Um, can we do that in education? Can we do that? And the thing that really gets me with the, the education system uh, is the authoritarian aspect of it. I love freedom, if you've not picked that up already from my previous videos. What is this I'm holding? I don't know. Um... And you go in from, from the age of, like, five years old, right? You go to kindergarten or whatever, and you're supposed to walk into this room, this room, particularly this room. You can't go anywhere else. I understand we don't want, maybe the kids, if they roam freely, they might run into the street, and they might, okay, but, 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 like, you know, what if I got my friend Billy in that classroom over there, and I went, no, I can't. Yeah, no, you have to wait until lunch or recess. You can't. What if I, no, no, you can't. You can't. You're in this class with this teacher. So now you have to be here. Well, why can't I be there? What if, you know, our hypothetical Billy and I would get along together and we might help each other and we might... There's no discussion of that. There's not even, like, a discussion. There's not... It's just... You walk in... We do this in many ways of life. In our jobs or something. You just walk into whatever situation, like, okay, here are the rules. Okay, rules, thank you. Um, wasn't it... Socrates or Aristotle or somebody, I don't know, he said um, something like, we, we are what we continually do, success therefore is not an act but a habit, or something like that. Um, and I read somewhere else, some article I read, that, that uh, the guy quoted, whomever it is I just quoted, so we are what we, con we, what we continually do, we are defined by our habits. So what does school teach us then, said this other guy, or girl, I don't even know. Um, well, school teaches us that we are meant to do as told, which is kind of weird. And, you know, and this is a democracy and all, and we came up with this idea a couple centuries ago, or actually go back to the Greeks a few thousand years ago, of like the people getting together and deciding for themselves what their laws will be and what they're going to do and what they're going to... But you walk into school and it's uh, kind of a monarchy <laughs> or an oligarchy or whatever. You are not part of the ruling class. You are the kid. You have to do what we say. Now, I know, of course, that uh, in certain aspects, you know, the more educated adults will know certain things the kids do not. Right? Um, I understand when the, uh, an adult wants to prohibit kids from running across the street, you know, because they're going to get hit by a car and they're you know, not smart enough to always look both ways. I don't know. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. There, there's a certain legitimacy to it, but it does have to go to every single detail. You walk into class. And, um, today, you know, we're learning math. We're going we're to learn math right now for, you know, say, in third grade now. We're, we're memorizing the multiplication tables. You know what? I never did really memorize those tables. I got some of them. To this day, I don't know. I look it up. Whatever. Turns out it's not that useful. And I get to another point. We'll get in a second. Okay, so, so now we're walking. The teacher says, okay, good morning, class. And good morning, Mrs. So-and-so, whatever. Um, today, we'll be working on our multiplication tables. Someone's like, okay, working on multiplication Why are we working on our multiplication tables? What if I don't want to work on those right now? What if I feel like doing writing? Or art? Or dancing? <laughs> or... Some sort, of, some sort of creative thing, maybe. What if I... No, we aren't doing that right now. We're doing math. Writing will come this afternoon. Well, could we do the writing now and then the math this afternoon? Could we, could we even, like, just change it around just that little bit? Do we have any... any legal, no, you don't. It's authoritarian. You walk in, the teacher will tell you what you were doing today. This makes me really aggravated. <laughs> I'm sure some people watching this, like... The freak doesn't matter. You get by. Like, no, I, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's healthy, to be quite honest. I don't think it's right. The very first thing we teach kids is to obey some, uh, some blind authority, essentially. You know, 